Hi, my name is Madeline Allen, and I am doing a presentation on Dallas Public Transportation, or the lack thereof, as I see it as an intersection of issues. So, a little bit of background on the situation. Uh, Dallas highways are very crazy. Um, residents experience some constant construction um, and expansion of these highways, and because of that, there are huge delays due to accidents. So there's a little bit of uh, stigma, taboo, um, and just a safety concern when you're driving in Dallas. Um, this picture is of a Dallas highway. As you can see, it's some um, uh, six lanes, <laughs> which is very crazy, and even then it's still uh, very crowded, uh, very snug. You're definitely going to be experiencing some wait times. So statistically speaking, not just from experience, Dallas is ranked the 12th most traffic congested city in the United States, and this is behind cities like uh, LA, uh, New York, Chicago, um, number 12, which I think is very crazy. Um, approximately 44 hours of a year is lost tr to traffic. And this means that out of 365 days a year, 24 hours every day, um, 44 of those are just the average person sitting in traffic. Now the congestion costs a driver approximately $680 every year. And this is just from stalling, um, sitting in traffic, um, kind of the gas um, and the price of the gas lost toward just sitting in traffic. So why is this happening? Well, within the last two decades, to be sure, um, Dallas has experienced a boom, both economically, in population, um, those kind of coincide with each other, um, and just within some 14 years, it experienced 35% population growth. Now, um, it's fair to say that the city very struggled, very much struggled to cope with this expansion and had to think fast. Um, and so because of that, we see um, crazy highway expansion just to accommodate um, the population growth. And suburbs definitely um, account for this need for a lot of highways and large highways um, because these people are commuting from the suburbs to the city to work. And um, ideally, this explosive growth needs some smart planning or smart revisions in order to be successful. Now, the suburbs of Dallas and these cities are Plano, Frisco, McKinney, just outside the city center. Um, they are commuter cities. Uh, so just the traditional American way of life, um, the people live in the suburbs and work in the city. Um, and this greater Dallas-Fort Worth area is home to just over 7.5 million people. 1.3 million of these people work within the city limits or live within the city limits of Dallas. Um, so this is definitely a, a high traffic area um, just within the people that are coming and going every day. You know, just within the limits are 1.3 million people um, who are no doubt uh, driving around, commuting around the area. So um, a lot of these places, um, since there was an economic boom within the last few decades, there are a lot of businesses such as um, Amazon warehouses, Texas Instruments. Um, these large businesses are home to a lot of workers. Um, so a lot of workers from these suburbs are going to the same buildings, to the same places, which in turn creates large highway systems, which in turn creates a lot of traffic. So these populated areas just create a lot of congestion. So some other faults that are found within the car-oriented city of Dallas 
uh, 17,000 Dallas families just within the city limits cannot afford a car. And 42.5% of Dallas households say that they are underserved by the public transit system. So in Dallas, they have the DART train, which is Dallas Area Rapid Transit, and it is notorious for um, being unreliable just in terms of um, arrival and departure times, uh, maintenance issues, and just how uh, unreachable it is to certain areas within Dallas. So as you can see, the picture shows uh, some a lot <laughs> of yellow triangles, which signify um, some maintenance or construction areas. Um, and that is a lot. Um, that means that the highways themselves are uh, under construction for one reason or another. Um, and this is more than likely to cause some wait times. Um, so a lot of the tax money that is spent on maintaining infrastructure um, is usually going toward these highway systems um, and systems that um, car drivers benefit from uh, instead of being funneled toward um, public transit systems um, and accessibility uh, for other Dallas residents. <laughs> So a new development within recent years is the rise in working from home, thanks and no thanks to COVID-19. Um, but Dallas has seen a real shift in its transportation since then. For example, my mother was considered a essential worker during uh, lockdown. So she kind of got to drive to work the same as usual every single day during lockdown. Um, and she said that the contrast uh, between, you know, February 2020 and April 2020 and how easy it was or how difficult it was to get to work, um, just seeing that change. She described it as flying down the highway. Um, her 30 minute commute was just shortened to 15 um, because absolutely no one was on the road completely free. Um, she said it was she said it was just amazing. It was um, such a surprise. She never thought that she would see the highways so clear during um, the rush hour to work. So uh, Dallas has gotten really good at this whole working from home thing. Um, number two in the country um, as far as uh, work from home jobs offered. Just over a hundred thousand work from home jobs. Um, this, the one in first place is in New York City, uh, sitting around 110,000, I believe, um, but that is not far off from where Dallas is. Um, and this really highlights uh, the post-pandemic future for those who are able to work from home. Um, we've seen a shift already, definitely within the last two years. Um, those who are able, who have internet, who have um, all the means necessary to make working from home successful um, have started making that transition, um, which um, in my experience um, has definitely cleared up a lot of traffic issues. Uh, I don't believe that Dallas's um, traffic uh, reports have been nearly as congested as they were pre-pandemic. So uh, now it is definitely in uh, within the realm of possibility that people can fix the infrastructure problem in Dallas by working at home. Um, a lot less work is done on the roads in terms of expansion and development, um, and this can leave a lot more funds to be allocated toward developing the public transit system for people who still need it and rely on it. So when talking about other countries in comparison to the Dallas area, um, just about every other developed nation has a very comprehensible public transportation system. Um, it 
totally is possible for Dallas to develop a system similar to this one, given that we have the means and we are just as developed as the other nations that have these comprehensive systems. Um, and even better, it could be incorporated into the current infrastructure that we have. Um, if you know anything about Dallas, uh, you know that the soil is very unstable um, in the area, which kind of makes a subway system near impossible. But um, given all of the infrastructure, all of the highway and road systems that we have, it is totally possible to expand upon that um, with rail systems and bus systems. And in doing this, we can benefit the people by um, creating more access, um, receive an economic boost, and help the environment. And as a plus, just reduce um, the amount of accidents and trouble that we see on our roads. So in conclusion, um, the people um, and the area has the development necessary and the capability to provide public transportation to the residents and the people have the power to assess and act on their needs. Um, and COVID-19 has made the switch to transit more possible um, thanks to the availability of online jobs and um, greater access to the internet. Thank you.